Welcome back to Jusand. Let's continue with, I believe it was chapter 4. Up there on the right is probably where I'm supposed to go. So I want to know what's over there. <laughs> Service memo. The old canal is finally clean, and locks 4 to 7 have been serviced. In all my time as a water surveyor, I've never seen the water level this low. But at least I was able to give the canal a good clean. I should say it was about time. Yuck, yuck, yuck. I've never been this filthy in my entire life. Off the clock for this sleep. Until next time. Ida. Lights are all so pretty. Ooh, oh my god, look at that. Just released a bunch of little firefly thingies. Oh, do it again, do it again. I don't know if my pulse does anything. I don't think so. Let's see what's down here first, actually. Oh, look at him. Oh my god. Call the sparks. Jump to be carried by the sparks? Whoa. Oh, thank you. They're beautiful and useful. Can I call them here? Hmm, doesn't seem so. There's a couple stray ones that seem interested in me. I don't think they'll help me, though. Oops.
Ah. Curious if there's anything on that other side over there. I can grab onto that. So I don't think there's anything there. God, just absolutely gorgeous. This was a forge. Hopefully you can see it. It's quite dark. But that was definitely a forge. jump against the wall, so if I just free jump, it's not going to do anything. Am I doing that right? Oh, I get a double jump. Yeah, so overall it was a workshop. All sorts of things. Metal, forging, uh, seems like craft work, textile work. Logbook. Twelve octaves, two sixths, and eight primes after the jusant. Oh, I think it's a song? Or a poem, perhaps? To the peaks I go, come what may, from chasm to salt marsh I make my way. To the peaks I go, come what may, to find my true love again one day. 
Up in the clouds I went astray from ravine to frozen paths of grey. The clouds watch me as I make my way, while I find my true love again one day. Sol was singing that to himself as we gathered lichen for hot drinks. I asked him to repeat it to me later. When he was young, Sol would hear the old women singing that song. Let's just say he's not as young as he used to be. The clouds watch me as I make my way. To him, it's a confirmation. The song is a map. Following the words will lead us to the ballasts. Met didn't say a word, and she can usually outchatter a weave beak. We returned empty-handed, but it felt good to be climbing as a trio again, like when we first set out on our climb. Everything was so much simpler back then. Later, Met told me she's tired of this expedition. She's sick of all the water in the clouds stuff. She doesn't believe in it anymore, or not enough. She doesn't know what to do. Return to low tide? Is there even anyone left there anymore? She dares to ask the questions I merely write down. If ballasts were real, why would they stay in the clouds? Could they be stuck here because the cycle stopped? Or is their presence stopping the world from waking up? And what am I doing on this hunting expedition? I miss my lighthouse. Is Highfield's old sundial and someone's thoughts too? One place for the ocean and another for the sun. Are there others? No one seems to be paying these old shipwrecks from another era much notice. We've gotten used to them by now. If we've forgotten that, what else have we forgotten? It worries me to see Met withdrawn into her shell more and more with each sleep. But she's still climbing. Come what may, Bianca. I worry that we're just going to find heartbreak at the end of this expedition. Hmm. Is this the critical path? No, no, it's not. Good, because there's nothing I hate more than the critical path. Well, I see a couple ways to go. I suspect their critical path is up here. And there's also this whole world above us. I can't shoot a line to that from the ground, so I think I need to do it from up here. There's a lot of ways to go, actually. I wish it was more obvious what the critical path is and what isn't. We can go up there. We can go over there. And we can go over here. Yasa, thank you for your support. Thanks to you, we can continue to work to protect three humped Saurians. Without your help, we would never have been able to renovate our shelter. I'm also happy to announce that the time has come. We've begun releasing some of our rescued Saurians back into the wild. This time, we're working with Sparkle Shroom growers to preserve shaded areas vital to Saurians. I'm confident that reintroducing them back into their natural habitat will be a success. It's still unclear how we're going to help the remaining ones adapt to life on the Great Plain, but now that this first phase is complete, at least the species' survival is assured. Thank you again, On. Three humped saurians. Have I seen three humped saurians before? Okay. Nothing there, so that leaves these two.
Oh, this loops around to this other area. Okay. That was one of my other options. And they just go to the same place. Mm, yeah, I'm pretty sure that this is the critical path. That we're meant to go up there. So I think the last remaining like bonus area is back here. Grab onto those rocks. Oh, yeah. Nice. Seems like a whole thing. Maybe this is the critical path. Who knows? Maybe this is just where you come down to if you fall. I don't see a way up. Oh, I seem to have awoken them. They like that. It's like they're spitting out bubbles. Oh, wait, hold on. I can climb this, can't I? Yeah. Hello, friends. Where are we going? Just straight up. Logbook, 13 octaves and one third after the Jusant. We docked for a while at the home of an old local farmer, Gal. To him, always having a wall within reach and a roof over your head is comforting. A feeling of safety you don't get in the open air. He made me laugh. The sky? No thank you. I saw it once and it made me dizzy. Gal seems to be all alone in the world, but he can't bring himself to leave the tower. We don't have to ask twice for him to tell us about water. He mainly remembers the sound it made when he was just a tadpole, as he put it, and the silence that followed the drought. He spoke of full canals and waterfalls, of mud and pruny skin, and I wasn't the only one listening. In the light of the glowing mushrooms, people's faces were exhausted, but their eyes were bright. The entire group hung onto his every word. Who will listen to his stories once we're gone? 
We ended up staying at the farm, delaying our departure just a little longer. There was no shortage of excuses. Gal's farm needed extra hands. There was a building frame to repair, spare parts to track down, ropes to replace. It felt good to be working on something concrete, rather than wearing myself out on an interminable climb chasing after legends. Probably the same feeling that keeps me carving my little sculptures. When it was time to leave, Met stayed behind. There was no need to explain. The group understood. All of us were secretly hoping to stay at Gal's farm. Well, I was. But I guess I'm still holding out a glimmer of hope for this expedition. Saying goodbye to Met was probably the hardest thing I've had to do since I started this climb. I don't know if I feel like riding anymore. Or have the energy to. Goodbye. Maybe. Bianca. What is that? Is it like a little Wilson? Jen, are you still around? How are things out there? Still no rain? I hosted a group from your part of the tower here. Off chasing clouds or whatever's in them. We had a great time. And I got a new housemate out of it, too. A youngster who reminds me of you. It'll be nice having two of us to run what's left of the farm. Hey, old man. Great to hear from you. I'm glad to know you're in good company. Cass and I were actually just talking about the odd jobs I used to do. It's been a while now since the harvests, hasn't it? When I think back to it now, it seems crazy how many people would come help you pick the sparkle shrooms. Well, mostly because of the pies you'd make them for snack time. You know, you never did give me the recipe. Oh, that goes up and up and up. That is for sure the critical path. That leads me to wonder, what is up here? Hey, Mama. Sadri asked me to clear out the cellar so they could store their furniture there, and I came across some old clothes that must have belonged to Grandpa. They don't look like anything we wear here, anyway. I had to throw them all out. Some sars had made their nest in them and chewed them all up. I wonder what it was like up there. The storm. Did you ever go back? You said it drove Grandpa completely crazy, but I never got a chance to talk to him about it. No, he never talked about um, anything much. The old man wasn't the chattiest of folks. The wind picked up. I don't remember how old I was. I could barely stand on my own two feet. That was a long time ago. When a storm like that came along, I wasn't allowed to go outside. I wasn't allowed to do much, come to think of it. Those were different times, huh? Then everything stopped. That part you know. But up there, oh, the raging storm stuck. The wind howled and howled. It was enough to drive you mad. We couldn't live up there anymore, you see, so we came down here. And now there's talk of climbing down again. Will it ever end? Alright, continuing on up here with the critical path. Looks like there's two ways to go. Let's 
over here? Pip is rubbing the mic. Oh, okay. Yes, boy. Yes, boy. Rub the microphone and make it make a horrible screeching noise. Yes. No more water, huh? We'll see about that. I'm sure if you dig deep enough, there's water to be found. No one believes me, but I believe in myself, and that's the main thing. Come on, old boy, we'll prove them wrong. The worst that can happen is that I'll find treasure. Or a caramel seam. That's some good stuff, caramel. What the heck is caramel? Is it literally caramel, but just spelled caramel? Or is it a whole other thing? Oh, I can grab the stuff. Or... Oh no, this is just a growth inside of the stuff. These little guys. They're so cute. This morning I forgot to put lichen in my drink, but drank it anyway, and then cried tears of joy because my toast was so delicious. I'm so wound up I can't get anything done. I don't know if I should blame the drought, 
the evacuation that started, or the end of the world. Anyway, I've got mushrooms to grow. It's vaguely hourglassy. It's like it's spraying water all around it. Some sort of hourglass sprinkler. Oh my god. Look at the scale of this. Potato pig. Hey, little guy. Community Canteen. Upcoming activities. Permanent team to fight water insecurity. Fundraising dinners for the Whitewater Collective. Repair workshop. All items accepted. Note the canteen will now open one prime earlier to reduce overcrowding. Pay what you can. To help in the kitchen, arrive early in the sleep. All help welcome. No one comes by anymore. I haven't sold a single flower. Should I switch careers? But I don't know how to do anything besides taking care of plants. I might as well write poetry, right? Or try to, at least. Roses are red, violets are blue. Where, oh where, has everyone gone to? Yeah. Oh, hello. Beautiful sculptures. This is all heading to. I mean, this looks quite critical pathy. I can't tell where I go from here. Um. 
Well, I guess I could swing. <laughs> There's so many of them up here. Do I actually do anything up here? Oh yeah, that. Umbrella Gazette, issue 37, 8 octaves and 2 fifths after the Jussant. Editorial. In this issue of the Gazette, we'll be looking at an animal from the outside for once, the weave beak. Weave beaks are the only animals found in every region of the tower, every known region, at least. Sometimes they even venture into our tunnels. These medium sized birds are known for their all white feathers and blue comb. It's not uncommon to see the playful birds gliding through the warm drafts that rise up the cliffs of the tower. They're also extremely curious and can often be found perched near climbing routes, observing and commenting on what's happening with their fellow birds. Not only are weave beaks social creatures, they're also skilled builders. They work together to build their nests, which have multiple entrances and can house dozens of weave beaks. They're constantly strengthening and expanding their nests, and are always on the lookout for twigs, hence the expression, working like a weave beak. Did you know, weave beaks' combs open and close depending on their mood. A wide open comb means that the weave beak is alert or stressed about something, or someone. But enough chatter, keep reading for an in-depth look at the lives of these outwardly unassuming yet fascinating birds. Dear editor, I've only read the editorial and I'm already outraged. It all sounds very nice, but you might want to think twice before publishing such nonsense. Weave beaks are thieves. They're always stealing my wood to build their nests. I'm unsubscribing. Signed, a disgruntled citizen. There's always one, right? Ah, I don't think it lets me grab that. So do I not need to climb that whole route there? Uh, it leads to some vines that will grow who knows where. I probably should do that. Could lead to something extra, perhaps? Where do you go? entirely sure that's useful. Or while I'm on the wall, can I throw my line out to one of those things and clip onto it? I'm not sure.
Come now, dear friend. Enough moping around. The situation isn't as hopeless as that. I'm quite certain the water supply is being managed by some very competent people. I have no doubt that they have a clever plan to get us out of this mess. Believe me, there's no cause for concern. Are you still coming over for tea? We've filled the basin. Nothing like a bit of swimming to chase away the blues. If only that was true. Oh, I don't know what just happened there. That was weird, but I'll take it. Looking down at how high up we are makes me think that this game might be, like, perfectly suited for VR. I imagine it would add so much to the sense of scale.
Let's go. Oh yeah, so satisfying. Oh, I'm on the wrong part though. Oh. Ah. Off big paper lantern vibes. It's showing an irrigation system. A bigger reservoir of water. See fish coming into the reservoir. We see a bunch of like tributaries, basically. Little water connections coming out from the reservoir and looks like they're watering crops. if they're grabbable. Can I ride one? God, the scale. I'm not looking at where I'm going. I'm just swinging out and just looking at this chasm. Wow. Okay, where are we actually going? I think right there where the lights are.
Sorry, Ida. I have to go to the market. Their water inlet is acting up again. Things are starting to get complicated. I really thought that by holding back the water... But there's nothing to be done. The basins are empty. I think it's time for a more radical change. What would have happened if we'd let the water flow freely from the start? I'm boring you with my musings. But sometimes I get the feeling we've made a big mistake. There's a pier collapsing in the boatman's district. Do you think you could take care of it? Hey, Joe. Things are non-stop at the moment. I'll have to go fishing for a new team to shore it up. Issa's already over at the Two Pillars site. As for the other stuff, I don't know what to say. What's done is done. Alright, I'll pick up the supplies I need and then I'm off to the Boatman's District. What would have happened if we'd let the water flow freely from the start? So what, instead of rationing it? How would that have helped? Hey, big guy. Hope you're well. You know, I still don't like the thought of you perched above that basin. It's too big. We just aren't made for the open air. You'd be better off in our tunnels, where it's cozier. You might have already heard, but Anne's barge is finally back on dry land. They can't drive it anymore, they say. But you should see them now. They've never been so busy. They're working at a SAR rescue center, or some such thing, if you can believe it. Who'd want to save SARS, seriously? They always look so disgruntled, like they're judging us. But things haven't been easy for Anne, and they seem happy again. That's what matters. Your father played a song for you. It was beautiful. May the currents be kind to you, wherever they are. I think it's a really nice touch how there's so much nautical and kind of water and wave based language in their writing because so much of their life has revolved around water. Wait, hold on. Is there something up here? Hmm. Probably not. But what if? I mean, it seems like there's no light up there. So I, I really doubt it. Oh, this is that spot anyway. And there actually is a little bit of light up here. We are the water surveyors. In the dark tunnels we guide, clean, navigate, rivers and streams. So the water cold forth in the day in the sky can fill, nourish, cherish all living things. Probably going down there. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, oh my god. <laughs> oh, that was a little bit too much forward momentum. I often wonder what would have happened if the rain had returned. Would we still have met? Or would we have led parallel lives elsewhere, each of us unaware of the other's existence? As much as seeing the Great Basin dry up more with each sleep fills me with despair, I can't help but be happy by your side. Actually, I think I still need that. Yeah, I gotta swing onto it. Another one of 
of these. Oh, are they going to lift us up there? Oh, we are going really high this time. Chapter 5, Mirage. So I think we've climbed high enough that we're now at the perpetual storm part, where people move down to get away from this. Oh, this is going to be really interesting. And probably extra terrifying. Alright, well, I'm going to save Chapter 5 for the next episode, so I hope you've enjoyed so far, and I'll see you on the next one.